Welcome everyone, this is Mindy, and in today's video, I have three cards that I wanna share with you featuring some new products from Gina K Designs. Now, two of these cards are going to be very similar, just different in color. I just was really having fun because the stencil is seriously awesome. So I'm gonna give you a couple different color combination ideas. And then the last card that I'm going to be creating is a beach sunset with a silhouette scene. So there's a little bit of something for everybody. Now, a lot of these products are coming from the new Vintage Summer Card Kit from Gina K Designs. You're getting two large stamps, coordinating dies, stencil, and then there's also a small free die set in there. I'm going to start by working on my stenciling. So here I have the Summer Bouquet Layering Stencil. It is a three-piece layering stencil, and they are labeled in the bottom left-hand corner to let you know the right side up and also stencil one, two, and three, which I was trying to figure out right here. So I am starting out with a six by six piece of cardstock. This is Layering Weight White from Gina K Designs, which is phenomenal for ink blending. And I'm going to start with my first stencil here on my magnetic work surface with light carnation. Now I did open up a brand new blending brush because my pink blending brush, the one I designate for pinks was pretty dark pink. And I really wanted that first layer to be a light pink. So thankfully I have some spare blending brushes in my drawer. Now I removed that stencil and I'm bringing in the second one. This is going to be the greenery. So for my greenery, I'm going for a really nice bright green. This is Key Lime. I will also have all of my colors use, that I'm using listed at, at the top of the screen. So I'm going over this with that nice bright green, and then I'm gonna step it up a little bit. So I'm bringing in some mini blending brushes and fresh asparagus ink. And I'm going to start pretty much on the stem and work my way up. There are going to be some stems in here that look like there's nothing there, but we will be filling in those floral images on the third stencil. So here I finished that layer with the leaves and then I can bring in that third layer of the stencil. This one has some rosebuds or flower buds and then there's also some dots. Now I'm going to start these buds using dark carnation. So I really wanted there to be a contrast between the two colors. I'm not worried about the dots right now. I had already planned on having those dots be black. I just really love having that little bit pop of black on my card front. So in order to do it without hitting my buds is I just took some post-it tape and I'm placing it over the top of the bud that's closest to those dots and then bringing in uh, some black ink. I think this was black onyx and I'm going to ink blend with a mini blending brush. Now you do have to be careful because when you have wet ink on your stencil, post-it notes or post-it tape doesn't want to stick to it. So you do have to be a little bit careful of that. I removed that last layer. This turned out so gorgeous. I just had to do another one, except this time I wanted to go for kind of more tropical colors. Uh, so I cleaned off my stencil with some rubbing alcohol. I came in with the first layer of the stencil using sea glass ink. Now, before I remove that first layer, I'm gonna bump up these flowers a little bit. This is blue denim, which really packs a punch to the flowers. And I'm using a mini blending brush to just start kind of down towards the bottom of the flower and blend up just a little ways onto the petals. So there is that first layer of the stencil done that I can bring in my leaves. And I'm going to start off once again with that key lime, adding that really nice light base color this time I'm coming in with a lucky clover to those stems and some parts of the leaves. Then for my third layer of the stencil, I'm going to be using, now this is lemon drop, which I honestly don't show enough love to. I usually grab wild dandelion, but lemon drop is really pretty, especially in sunsets. So here I just brought in my big blending brush, uh, went ahead and added that lemon drop, and then I'm coming in with a mini blending tool and sweet mango just at the very bottom of those buds. I'm gonna mask off those buds once again and come in with that black onyx. It's just, I really love having that nice dark black in that contrast with my pretty bright yellow flowers, but you can definitely do whatever you see fit for the card. 
So I'm going to set these backgrounds off on the side and I am going to use this new stamp set from the card kit. I apologize. I don't have the name with me on hand, but it is the silhouettes and they are beautiful. Plus there is a new stencil out. So I think this is called sea, sky and sun, something along those lines. And it has clouds at the top, a sun in the middle, and then there's kind of this wavy line here down at the bottom. Now that can either be waves. You can make an ocean with that. I am using it to create a beach. So I have that there and I applied Sandy Beach ink and then I'm going to come in with craft ink right at the very bottom, kind of blend up towards the top so it has a little bit of a two-tone look. Now I'm not sure if this is supposed to do it this way, but I took my stencil and I kind of uh, flipped it to mask off my sand. It, there's a little smidge of a gap down in one area but I'm totally okay with that. I'm going to go with it. And then I took a piece of post-it tape and just went a little bit above that to create a water line. So that's going to be my horizon or the line of my ocean. And now I'm bringing in sea glass ink for the base of my ocean. And I'm going to bring in blue denim for on the side. So I just apply that dark blue on each side and I'm going to have it fade off towards the center. So it's like a highlight area in the middle there. I removed my post-it tape, lined the top edge of my post-it tape up with the top line of my ocean, and now I'm creating my sunset. So for this is Lemon Drop, which I had mentioned earlier is just a beautiful color to have in your horizon. Then I'm going to bring in a little bit of that sweet mango, add that right above my yellow and kind of have it blend into it. You could see I'm also extending it a little bit because I want these to all uh, kind of create that ombre effect going down the front of my card. And last, I'm going to bring in passionate pink at the very top. So once I have these all blended, I am going to go back over those colors just a little bit to kind of help smooth out the transition. You might see at first it's a little bit blotchy, but once these inks dry, they are absolutely so smooth looking. It's going to look like it's airbrushed. It, when Gina says it, she's not lying. <laughs> they turn out so beautiful. I can now remove my post-it tape and also the stencil. So here is the start of my scene. Now I wanted to show you really quick how the clouds work. If you haven't worked with the cloud stencil uh, before, I already created my ocean again and my sandy beach, but here for the clouds, I placed it up towards the top, leaving a little bit of white cardstock and I'm coming in with sea glass ink. I start on the stencil and blend up and off of the stencil. So it's going to fade off into white. Then I can move it down, shift it over a little bit and repeat that same step. So really all you need to do is just kind of bring it down, shift it over. The more you shift it, the more cl uh, cloud variation you're going to get, or you can clean your stencil and flip it over. So there's a lot of versatility, even just with one edge of clouds. So I filled that entire background. Unfortunately, I didn't get to finish this card front because I had to do some errands. So I'm going to save this off on the side for any other type of project. Uh, before I do that, I wanted to add some splatters to my sand. So I'm kind of masking off the top part there with some spare cardstock. I brought in my splat box and I just have some white paint here that I mix with water and I'm flicking that onto the um, beach. <laughs> now, if you are going to stamp a silhouette on your beach, I would suggest not adding these flicks. You'll see why in a little bit. It's going to still kind of work out for the most part, but just be aware that if you are going to stamp a silhouette on top, you don't want to have any flicks. But since I had some leftover white paint, I went ahead and added some of those flicks to one of my flower panels. I apologize if it seems like I'm jumping back and forth between cards. I was just kind of doing everything in steps. I did all my ink blending. I was going to do all my flicking or splattering. So now I'm coming in to some stamping and I have this beautiful silhouette image placed down in the bottom of my cardstock panel and I'm going to stamp that down in the black onyx ink. Now this is where you can kind of see down at the bottom there. I was a little frustrated. I can see the flicks of my white paint peeking through, but I'm going to roll with it. I'm not going to worry about it. I spent a lot of work on that card, so I'm okay with it. Uh, there's also some little birds that I'm going to stamp on that background. I think birds, birds or clouds always seem to really help finish off a scene. So I stamped those in the black ink as well. Now, apologize, jumping over to the flowers. 
I am going to turn these into cards. So my idea for these was I wanted to die cut out this panel and add it to the scalloped panel that I'll show you in a moment. So I am using a die from the Master Layout 2 die set. And I wanted to do that because I like being able to uh, decide what area of my, my flower bouquet to cut out versus using a paper trimmer. But the Master Layouts 2 doesn't fit right inside of that scallop piece that I die cut. So I need to trim this panel down. And I will have those exact measurements listed at the top of the screen. I'm sorry I don't remember offhand what they were. But once I trimmed it down, it fit perfectly right outside of the stitched edge that that scallop die created. And I did the same thing with my pink panel. Like I said, you could just trim your panel down on your own, but I preferred to do it my way so I could pick and choose what part of that background to die cut out. Now I'm just taking my tape runner, I'm adding that to the back of each of them and adding that to my scalloped mat. So I really wanted to use these scalloped mats and I think they just turned out perfect. So now I can add these two card fronts. So I have card bases here that are A2 size and I'm just adding those right on top. I figured the layers are going to give my card enough dimension. I don't need to add too much more. For sentiments, I had these two sentiments stamped out and die cut out already. So I thought I would just go ahead and use them. And look at what Gina is coming out with reverse tweezers with her Gina name on it. I was so excited when Gina texted me and showed me these. I definitely have two pair because one is for getting dirty and one I can use in my photo props. And gosh, you can never have too many tweezers. So I was super excited to be using these today. So here I have the word beautiful die cut twice out of white cardstock, once where I stamped it and die cut it out. And I'm layering those together with the connect glue that I have and the fine tip bottles using my tweezers, of course, to help align that. Then I have a T-square ruler I'm going to use. So I line that edge up with the edge of my card base and that's going to help me make sure that this is straight. And I'm going to do the same thing for my other card that says Marvelous. Now I'm not gonna add any other sentiment to this. I was really just in a very kind of uh, clean and simple mood, I guess. I don't wanna say plain, but I really just didn't wanna add anything else to this. I thought the dimension was enough to make the sentiment stand out and I didn't think I needed any embellishment, so I'm calling those cards good. Back to finishing up my sunset card, I decided to add a frame around my scene. So to do that, I just used the Master Layouts 2 and die cut that out from some white cardstock, so that leaves me with a frame. I lined that up in my Misty to get an idea of where the sentiment is going to go, and then I'm going to stamp that in the black ink. So I really like to frame things when I just honestly don't know what else to do. It's kind of just a go-to for me, but I like to pop the frames up. So I am using these foam strips from Gina K Designs. I'm going to put these all around my frame. They don't have to be butted up right next to each other like I normally would with a shaker card. I just wanna make sure that there's complete coverage. Then I can remove the backing of that and place that over my design. Now you're gonna notice that the bottom there, it actually covered up most of those flicks that were showing through my silhouette. So that kind of worked out. That finishes up my three card projects for today to give you some ideas and inspiration, whether in your card making or with using the Vintage Summer Card Kit from Gina K Designs. All of my supplies will be listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and I'll see you again soon.